But one of the things it might predict is that anything is possible. And if anything is possible, it's not clear you have a scientific theory at all. But now, I'm going to skip forward. In the last minute, I, I had a good arc, joke about George Bush, but I won't give it. <laughs> and I'm going to skip this. I'm going to skip this. Forgive me, it's really interesting, but I want to get to the very end, which will really tell you about how miserable our future really is. And it should put us, give us a kind of cosmic humility, which is the other thing that is, I should be characteristic of science. A humility, the recognition that we don't understand everything. Bill Maher talked about it last night. What pompous assholes like Rick Warren, who claim to understand everything, are an anathema to science. We should realize that, that where there's more we don't understand about the universe than we do. And I want to give you an example of this. The far future. What's going to happen in the far future? Remember, a hundred years ago, we thought we lived in a static, eternal universe. What will the future bring? The amazing thing is, for civilizations that live in the far future, what will they see? Well, the universe is accelerating. That means all the distant galaxies are getting carried away from us, and eventually they'll move away from us faster than the speed of light. It's allowed in general relativity. They will disappear. The longer we wait, the less we will see. In a hundred billion years, any observers evolving on stars around our, uh, and, and there will be stars just like our sun in a hundred billion years, any observers on civilizations evolving around those stars will see nothing except for our galaxy, which is exactly the picture they had in 1915. All evidence of the Hubble expansion will disappear. Why? Because we won't see the other galaxies moving apart from us. So they will have no evidence, in fact, of the Big Bang. They won't see the Hubble expansion. They won't even know about dark energy, and I won't go into that. They won't know about the cosmic microwave background. It will disappear, too. It will redshift away, and it turns out, for fancy reasons, there's a plasma in our galaxy, and, and uh, if, when the universe is 50 times its present age, the microwave background won't be able to propagate in our galaxy. All evidence of the Big Bang will have disappeared. And those scientists will discover quantum mechanics, discover relativity, discover evolution, discover all the basic principles of science that we understand today, use the best observations they can do with the best telescopes they will build, and they will derive a picture of the universe which is completely wrong. They will derive a picture of the universe as being one galaxy surrounded by empty space that's static and eternal. Falsifiable science will produce the wrong answer. In fact, I want to end with the good news. We live in a very special time. The only time we can observationally verify that we live in a very special time. <laughs> okay, it's clear I'm, I'm clear I'm being facetious. What it really should tell us is we've discovered this crazy picture of the universe that we don't understand at all. It all holds together. But maybe if we had evolved five billion years earlier, there would have been observables we could have seen that would have changed that picture. Maybe five billion years in the future, it'll be different. The universe remains mysterious. And that is great. But I do want to say, in the far future, this is the picture. We will be lonely and ignorant, but dominant. And those of us who live in the United States are, are used to that. <laughs> let, me, let me end. Okay, that's the end. Thank you. On the one hand, the Woody Allen of cosmology, <laughs> we've been privileged to hear and witness the scientific mind at full stretch in all the excitement that it can bring. And I'm delighted that we've had that, this, this talk today. Um, what grieves me is that at least in Britain, and it may be true here as well, young people going to university are voting with their feet and not going into physics. They're going into media studies. <coughs> despite the enormous excitement that is in physics and cosmology, despite the fact that, as, as Lawrence said, the Large Hadron Collider is e even now about to revolutionize the, the way we think about ourselves. Um, there was a misprint in my book just finished, uh, The Greatest Show on Earth. I referred to the Large Hadron Collider. It got rendered as the Large Hard-On Collider. <laughs> 
That's okay. That, that's okay because that's what physicists are getting right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. Are I um, I spotted it and I prayed that the the publisher's copy editor, the publisher's proofreader, wouldn't spot it, and she did. And I pleaded with her to leave it in, um, and uh, she said it was more than her life was worth. So. so. Um, Lawrence, thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Oh, we do? Oh, good. I, I, well, I think we do. I mean, it, actually, it's cutting into your book signing. Which I'd, would you I'd rather ra do? I'd, I'd rather answer questions. Okay, than sign books. I'll be around all day. So. Okay. Well, the question was, are, ge are people who are involved in general relativity more religious than other scientists? Which apparently Steve said in, in, when Richard uh, and he had a dialogue. I, I have no memory of him saying that. Yeah, that's great. And um, there are some great interviews you should watch of Richard when that was with me. But anyway, um, uh, we had fun. Uh, I think that, no. I mean, there are a few. There's a, a famous general relativist who's, who's now, unfortunately, become a nut named Frank Tipler, who's, um, who I've actually debated at Cal, right near here at Caltech a few years ago. Um, and there are some, but I, I don't think that's true in general. There are a few. There's one or two. I, I, I don't think there's any evidence of that. What is true and is interesting, and I think I will answer in a more relevant way, is that general relativity unfortunately gives people the wrong idea about science. And unfortunately I get a lot of letters from crackpots because of it. Everyone imagines Einstein sat in a room, closed doors, and thought of this picture, and came up with this beautiful theory independent of reality. Like string theorists. Okay? And, and the answer is that's not true at all. Einstein was guided by experiment was guided deeply by experiment. Not just the thought experiments he did in his mind, but if you read what Einstein said, after he developed general relativity, okay, one of the first calculations he did was the, was the orbit of Mercury around the, the Sun. And the, it, the orbit shifts a little bit, this perihelion moves. And no one understood why that was. And he said, he calculated that what should happen to general relativity, it moved. And it moved by exactly the right amount. And he said, his heart, he almost fainted. Because that was the moment that he knew was the right theory. And so, it's not as if scientists are out of touch with experiment and come up with pictures like religion that are just beautiful, that they believe because of their intrinsic beauty. As beautiful as general relativity was, Einstein would have thrown it out like yesterday's newspaper if it had come up with the wrong answer for the perihelion of Mercury. Um, my question is probably uh, easily answered. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, if quantum fluctuations are able to actually produce universes, uh, even, that, even though that may be extremely improbable, um, is there ever a chance we might actually observe another universe being created? That's a, no, it's a really good question. People wonder if you, well, actually it's one of the questions people worry about with the Large Hadron Collider. Maybe you'll create this universe. And uh, whether you can create baby universes in the laboratory is still an open question. There's lots of evidence that suggests you can't. You can't actually physically create the energy conditions necessary. But we don't know for sure. It's one of these open questions that people like me get paid to think about. But, but interestingly enough, and this is one of the wonderful things about general relativity, is if a baby universe, if a universe got created, an, an, an inflating universe like the one we think we, we began in, it's really weird. Because from the inside, it would look like it was growing exponentially. From the outside, it would look like it was shrinking to form a black hole. So, it's not so clear that we would know about that. Okay? Now, we do think, and the current picture of, of the best picture of, of cosmology involves something called inflation right now, and it suggests that our universe that we see is just part of a multiverse in which there are other regions where there may be universes just being created now. But because those regions are literally moving away from us faster than the speed of light, we will never know about them periodically. So it's not as if those inflating universes collide. As fast as they expand, the space is between them is expanding faster. And so, unfortunately, these are right now, in some sense, metaphysical pictures. And what we want to do is learn enough about the fundamental physics at places like Large Hadron Collider to know if there are other observable implications that we can measure. Just like we believed in atoms a long time before we saw atoms, because all the other implications agreed with experiment. So it may be that we never know about those other universes directly, but we have a theory that tells us that explains the mass of the proton, the mass of the electron, but it also tells us that those other universes exist, we would be willing to accept them without seeing them. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Take a few more. Okay. All right, hopefully there's no stupid questions. So. There, there are no stupid I'm questions. I'm wondering, uh, how do you wrestle with uh, infinity? For example, it seems like all your, your 
thinking and what laws, what it has to do with a, a finite amount of matter. You were talking about.